Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Chill With Your Meal today. I got lucky enough to sit down with Linda George. Linda George? How are you, Ramiel? It's good to chill with you <laughs> backstage. <laughs> Absolutely no. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me after performing all weekend. Oh, thank you so very much. I really, um, I was excited to meet you in person and then to get this opportunity after performance. It was, it's a blessing. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, my parents brag about you all the time. And once thank I told you. them that I'm going to interview you, they got so happy. <laughs> thank you so very much. <laughs> I know them from um, Medjugorje Church, the cathedral in Chicago. So um, yeah. they're, I'm, I'm so proud that they've raised such a great, uh, wonderful man. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So what I want to know is, you know, when did it all start? How old were you when you first started singing? At the age of five. Um, I was singing, of course, since the age of probably, um, since my mom gave birth to me, I was singing because it runs in her family. Mm -hmm. And then um, apparently I just loved singing on the, in the terrace of the houses and back home in Baghdad. And I kept on singing. And then I think my mom, you know, like my siblings would go to church and my two other sisters who were way older than me I came after 10 years um, so I um, took after them and they were in a church choir of St. Mary's Cathedral and, mm -hmm. and back and back home in Baghdad and I just um, at the age of five um, I got rest of soul uh, um, um, he um, discovered me with his um, the group of his um uh, Shamashi and deacons um, and I guess you know I kept on you know raising my hand I want to sing I want to do the solo because they were testing our voices and they thought like man this this girl is too young <laughs> I'm like okay I need to be discovered well I wasn't doing that to be discovered to be quite honest I just wanted to sing absolutely and I just thought this is so easy it was Pagra one of the most ancient hymns you know in the Assyrian Church of the East mm -hmm. and I um, honestly I the minute I got my turn. I was so blessed to share my, the gift, the talent that I have, that God had graced me with. And I, they were like in an awe. This little petite girl, mm -hmm. she can sing. She can really sing this hymn so perfectly. And I, it was started from there. And ever since then, I mean, till now, you've been doing, you've been singing all around the world also, right? Globally, yes, Globally. I'm very blessed. Wherever Assyrians in our nation, um, you know, mm -hmm. Neumten, wherever they are, so I perform worldwide. I'm very blessed. And did you have any highlights in high school? You were still doing the singing in high school also? Well, I was, you know, singing English in high school. I would sing for my friends and in the, um, you know, high school little tiny dramas, but nothing major because when I came to America, uh, 90, 1979, um, 1980, New Year's Eve, um, my uncle, who's also a beloved um, uncle, father figure, he was the president of the Assyrian National um, Foundation, mm -hmm. and um, he asked me to sing, and th that night, it was a big crowd of 1,200 people in Chicago, and um, I was with my family, and I was just young girl that didn't have makeup on just really naive and they said do you want to sing and my, i looked at my uncle's like sure but this is sergon gabriel you know Imbrator Zimraturaya. and they're like come on up just sing something yeah. i'm like sure and i looked at my family yeah they were willing to do you know they were willing to support me um but they didn't want me to sing initially but because my uncle isaac you know said get up and sing and that was it he gave it a little extra push yeah, he did. He's yeah. very been very supportive since then. And um, I sang and, you know, I my mom didn't want me to sing. She wanted me to proceed with my medical school. Sounds like um, every other typical Assyrian parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a doctor, which is great. It's yeah. really great. Yeah, but yeah. unfortunately, you know, I, I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to be a surgeon. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's it not... It didn't a, work out. You know, but. I always say it's not how we want it. It, it is... It hap it is how it happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, it's and what however it happens, it's written from above. Absolutely, absolutely, I like that. Yeah. So how was it like singing with Sadakon Gabriel? Oh my god, I, I got up and of course I didn't sing with him. I mean he was a mega star and I was a nobody, mm -hmm. you know, just a church, you know, choir soloist. And um 
it was Asha Baba. It was the heartbeat band. It was a famous band, you know. Um, famous in Iraq or in America? In America. Okay. Talk about queens. That was the queens of, of uh-huh. the, you know, the 80s yeah. for the Assyrians. Okay. And Asha Baba was like, you know, this guy, very young, produced most of, you know, all the Assyrian hits. And he was the arranger. And still is. Um, and I got up and I'm like, okay, I want to sing Sh- La Panna Shapira. And he looked at me and I was like, okay, Sargon Gabriel is sitting here. Why would you? I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just a starter. I don't have my songs, you know, yeah. just a, you know. And it would have been easier because I wanted to honor Sargon Gabriel, you know, with one of his songs. And, and I said, oh, and I want to do the Mawal. You know, Mawal is the little a cappella, you know. And Ashababa looked at me like, okay, you mm. know, sure. As soon as I started singing and I did that a cappella in the in the Yaqub Gayaqura la pana shafira and the la pana and I started singing that a cappella and then like their jaw dropped I guess and that was it I think and, wow. and you know like they say Star was born <laughs> So after that um at what point did you start taking the music career more seriously uh, Sargon approached me and my mom wasn't too happy. My dad was totally against it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, they asked me to sing and I'm like, okay. But I was too young to sing any love songs, to be quite honest. I mean, the age of 15 to 16. So I did the first um, song. They asked me to do a song as a duet with Sargon Gabriel. And... Um, and it was like the Ghazala. It was a song, one of his oldies, and my sister kind of re, um, refurb- refurbished the lyrics and made them more modern. Mm-hmm. And then my mom wanted me to do Dalal Dalale. And um, of course, my mom is one of my great producers, to be quite honest. She was also, um, she would produce him, for me all the songs, all the old folk songs that I didn't hear of. But um, the first song she introduced me to was Dala Dalale. Mm-hmm. And of course, I did not like the original melody. So I told her, I'm going to change it. And she looked at me and said, like, How are you going to change this? This is a, a very ancient song. You cannot change it. I'm like, No, I'm going to change it. So she kept on arguing with me, You cannot change it. So I went to the, it was a very humble studio of Heartbeat Band. My sister Odette. Bazi, who was my manager at that time, along with my mother. We went in and I, I told, I introduced the song also to Sargon Gabriel and they fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. It was a very humble song, played with um, four-piece band, including Johnson saxophone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a little studio in the basement. So um, we produced the song and it became a hit honestly even in Lebanon to the non-Assyrians it was called what again? Dalal Dalale Dalal Dalal Dalale so um, that was my first melody that I produced and I I was very um, very intrigued how people responded to it and I'm like wow this is a gift that I can um, put a melody together and it becomes such a major hit Mm -hmm. until today Um, and that was it and then ever since I started you know, I produced my first album as a solo album, my mm-hmm. first debut album, and it was called Haliman with the help of my sister Odette, and then uh, the arranger William Neeson, and from then on, the Mizalta, the um, the story of Linda George. Um, nice, nice. You know, the legacy, I should say. Absolutely. Know. Well, the legacy still lives on. Thank you. I want to know: you. Are you still going to be making new music also? Yes, I mean, I produce um, every two years, which is kind of hard because we don't have a label. I've always mm-hmm. said this. A lot of people, um, they always throw darts at us. Oh, I don't like your video. It's a cheap video, your music. Well, um, we are um, self-made, yeah. you know, in this, uh, this music industry, in the Assyrian music industry. And also, we do not have a label. Yeah. We don't have a record label. So um, I'm not someone that is signed up with... Virgin or uh, Rotana at Arabaya. I am just uh, a person that works hard for my Absolutely. my career. So people should really honor that for every Assyrian artist because nonstop since '82, I've been producing my albums. Except two albums were produced by the second album, Kursiat Malkuta, was uh, executive producer was Sargun Yonan, and um, 
Allah uh, Tatkhubba uh, was produced by um, executive producer, of course, um, by um, another person. Mm -hmm. So I truly believe that we never had any help. Maybe here and there we have people that come in and um, uh, would be able to, let's say, honor us with a production of a video or a video producer, which I'm very, very um, thankful to all of them. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we have no budget, not even a dollar towards any production, not in audio, not in video making. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very difficult. You know, there are always, there's always going to be people that are going to give some type of backlash about quality and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I, go through the, I go through the same type of things myself and you know, other music artists that I deal with also. Correct. So, but I also see you as an entrepreneur with the way how you carry yourself. You said you're not signed to any label or anything. You do everything on your own, right? Yeah, I have Lamaso Records. You know, mm -hmm. Lamaso, the Assyrian wing bowl. Yeah. And um, I, you know, that's been produced since um, early 90s, mm -hmm. uh, since Kumakhwara, I, I put a logo, but that's my own uh, logo, and I'm very honored and proud of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. But speaking of entrepreneur, uh, not only do you do music, but when I told my mom that I was going to interview you, she mentioned that you opened up a boutique in Iraq. Yes, in Ankawa Arbil, um, mm -hmm. in the Christian community. And I'm wearing one of my gowns. Um, it's beautiful. And thank you. And uh, it's one of the fall collection that's coming um, soon to my boutique. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I wanted to create job opportunities for our women who were um, um, displaced, um, mm -hmm. graduated from uh, schools. And of course, it's not a big uh, boutique, but you know, it um, has three women um, managing it and then um, you know working in it um, but you know I don't want people to be uh, saying um, she's not designing her clothes I'm not a designer I'm a singer mm -hmm. um, and you know I buy my gowns from different countries and but I curate them for my with my taste but you're the designer for the actual dresses uh, no I'm not no I'm okay. not no I'm not the designer mm. and a lot of people like they say throw darts at you and it's like no I'm not a designer I've never said that I was a designer right. but um, you know I choose the gowns that I wear and I had a lot of fans who are in love with my gowns and I said let me just open a boutique in Athra you know um, Om Tana Yuta being a nationalistic figure mm -hmm. is not only Yep, 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 behind, you know, the computer, becoming a Facebook hero Absolutely. is with what you do. And um, a lot of us can uh, have a, a lot of, uh, we can give a lot of job opportunities for people to reside, to be able to reside and to live in Athra. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can open uh, a different uh, story, different um, a boutique, different anything, and you can offer job opportunities for our people in there. And that is part of uh, being a nationalistic, um, you know, a figure. So that's my duty, mm -hmm. actually. You know, uh, I, it's not that it, it generates for me millions of dollars. Right. Um, I just make sure that everyone's paid. Yeah, absolutely. It's out there to be established. Yes, absolutely. And then from then on, you know, we can create more jobs. It can get bigger, hopefully, in the near future. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. But um, back to the music. Um, you have made uh, songs in English before, right? I have. I have. It was in two, uh, 2000, 2000. Yeah, I went to Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, because the record label was um, not a proper one, I should say, I started producing the album. And then it was never completed because, you know, um, the company was a fraud. Mm. So um, I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's yeah. okay. It, what, what the the you know well the bad part about it, I was already getting signed up in Netherlands, yeah. and because the owner, I knew him. He was a drummer, and um, he was a relative to the family. He said, "Oh, you can come here. I have a record label. You're gonna be definitely signed up." And um, so I thought, okay, let me take a shortcut. Yeah. But it didn't serve me well because I would have been right now, um, I was really working with major 
producers in mm-hmm. Netherlands that they till today they produce big hits. Right, right. Yeah, but I, I really let them go, and, um, and well, they were disappointed in me. Yeah. But um, I feel like it's never too late, though. Do you ever plan on singing us? singing uh, songs in English? Yeah, I mean, I mean my voice is, is very versatile. I have versatility. I have my voice, my range is just, I'm very lucky. I'm yeah. very fortunate. I don't think the the genre right now, the the um, the style of music right now is not what I used to listen. I used to listen to Whitney Houston, the good old Mariah, mm-hmm. Barbara Streisand. Um, I still listen to Josh Groban and then, you know, um, Celine and, um, but to be quite honest, if I'd ever do a, anything in English, it would be spiritual. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I want to do something for spiritual and what my, yeah. my king up there. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Now, uh, I thought that you had a show going on. Are you, uh, is that ever going to happen? The Linda show on ANB, um, no, and I want to explain it really um, in a very simple way, in a simple manner. Hey, absolutely, it's you know, I mean, thank you. Um, there was a big conflict between the church leader and the owner of the TV, and it happened to me that it happened to be that I was in the middle. But of course, church and state has to separate. And um, I was doing my job, and I actually I didn't know how many fans I've had till the show was really. I stopped my show because I respect church, and I'm the cousin to the patriarch, His Holiness Margibag is. Mm-hmm. So I respect church totally, and I had to stop my show because of church. Mm-hmm. But other than that, honestly. Um, it was not supposed to be that way to begin with. It was not supposed to be stopped. For one reason, I was introducing all these artists that worked so hard and since the 80s till today, artists, new artists that people don't even know of. Mm-hmm. And um, they were coming up. It was a live show, unplugged version, singing their songs. We were just chatting, having a great time, and many singers were willing to be on my show. So um, for my fans, I really want to thank each and every one of you for being so supportive and so loving and so kind. Mm-hmm. And um, and most of my fans, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm a Syrian Church of the East member, but 80% of my fans are not a Syrian Church of the East member mm-hmm. because... They could be from the Syriac Orthodox, the Syriac Catholic, mm-hmm. Atheist, Chaldean Church, the um, Maronite Church, you name it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, I, you know, also we have the old calendar, the new calendar among us Assyrians. So um, I was very saddened to stop my show. Mm-hmm. And we have hundreds of DMs and messages asking us if the show is going to ever come back to A and B. It's, you know, I've stopped it for right now. I mean, I have bigger projects. And, um, like the show with the real show, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> of course. You know, um, yeah, you know, I, again, you know, I respect the church. And I respect A and B. I mean, the members were like family to me as well. Yeah. And we worked together. And I was working with no pay. Nobody was getting paid, yeah. to be quite honest. We were doing it for the love of the Assyrian music. Because okay. the Assyrian music and the Assyrian artist had kept this nation really... It's, it survived, basically. It did. It, it did. The, the, the nation agree. survived. I mean, look at the convention right now. Yeah. If you take the singers and if you take all these entertainers out... Who's going to be just coming in just to, I'm sorry to say, my. I mean, I love the president, Martin, and the whole committee are just my friends. Yes. But if you just tell them, oh, there's going to be meetings, nobody's going to attend. Absolutely. It has to be, and look, the Bagie, uh, the Chigayakura, all these young kids dancing to those songs. Mm-hmm. It's definitely, um, you know, it's it's a generation ahead that is reliving the um, the legacy 
of our Shekhani, of Khagayakur, of all that's history. That's, you know, culture. Yeah, I know. It's and very it's, heartwarming to see that here. Yes, going on. yes. You're seeing a 12 year old dancing or a 10 year old, and it's just amazing. It's mesmerizing. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. I, um, you know, I think artists, I, I was just, I came up with a show like Ibo show, you know, the Ibrahim Tatli show, but of course not in a big production like that because mm-hmm. we don't have a country. Right. But for us not, not to have a country, you know, I wanted to create something like you're creating something right now. Yeah. yeah it is absolutely. for, you know, your fans, your followers, your, the people your age. So everyone's trying to do something and it's, it's nice to do something for the, um, for the fans. I, I don't know. So as far as do like doing stuff, um, have you ever thought about you know you obviously you do the singing, um, you have uh, the boutique in Iraq. Um, have you thought about something that you wanted to do that you haven't touched up on before? Um, just something that sits on the back of your mind. Nothing crazy. Um, no, I'm just gonna. I mean, I have a lot of ideas. I'm always inventing ideas, but mm-hmm. um, more than my career, like what I've come up with, 20 album, another, the one is following is going to be a spiritual album, mm-hmm. but fully orchestrated. I like that. Yeah, fully orchestrated to every person um, in the world will listen to it, Assyrian or non-Assyrian. And um, we're also, uh, I've been wanting to do the opera of Malik Shamiran, Queen Shamiram. What is that exactly? Can it's, you translate that? It's an opera. It's, okay. it's just an opera, and it's going to include, um, you know, uh, nationalistic songs, mm-hmm. and um, it's almost like the Phantom of the Opera. But this is how I wanted to create it uh, for the Assyrians, um, because I, when I sang in Mesopotamia, I, I just felt like, okay, this is a level way above there mm-hmm. what we've been doing and producing. And um, I wanted to create something like, you know, again, non-Assyrians will buy the tickets and attend. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we'll create that within one year or two years. Okay, cool, cool. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. And I hope I hear new music coming out. Well, you know, I've, I've, last year was Christmas 2018. I've, you know, I came up with Mm Lelakhtaita. And it's a lot of work to come up with 10 songs, you know. But right now, I think I'm due to do a duet uh, with Nino's David. Mm-hmm. It's going to be released next year, late April. It's a beautiful song. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my great producers, um, uh, he's producing it in, in Toronto, Shirak Tatasyan. He's out of Naya, but he loves Assyrian music. Yeah. And he sings Assyrian too, he's funny. <laughs> so um, it's a beautiful duet, and um, hopefully people will like it. But prior to that, I think I'm going to release something um, as, a, as far as a video or also a single. Okay. Yeah, I love, I love studio. I love to produce, but sometimes I don't have time because I travel sometimes 120,000 miles. <laughs> so it's a lot of a lot of work traveling. Yeah, absolutely, I'm I'm not surprised too. A lot of uh, music, a lot of music artists that I interviewed, they told me the same thing. They're addicted of being in the studio, but at the same time they have to be out of it, you know, because they're busy. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I don't know when's the last time you touched base with a whole you know big base of fans and all that but I think right now is the opportunity if you want to have a little outro um, to oh. say something to your fans for oh. all these years remember that honestly um, I want to thank each and every one of you um, you've been supportive I would have been singing for four decades if it wasn't for you guys and um, you are kind-hearted people you're very respectful and I really earned that from you, and I learned that from you as well, to be uh, respectful and very kind-hearted. Um, and um, thank you so very much for um, supporting all of the, um, the stories that I advocate um, for our people back home, the displaced, the less fortunate ones. Every time you donate a dollar, it really, it makes my heart like, the happiest heart on the planet. It's beautiful. And I really thank you. Mm-hmm. And every mother, especially in the sacred heart of um, Ankawa, they appreciate every dime, every penny that you guys donate towards them. And St. Jude also 
the children. Um, you put every penny to work, honestly. And I'm really thankful. But I'm also very thankful that I didn't create any of my, um, a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. I advocate for all these different organizations, such as a Ciro, a Syrian Aid Society, mm -hmm. HelpIraq.com, Mercy, St. Jude of Iraq. Like, I've never wanted to have or, or, or produce or I would, you know, um, create an organization of my own, which I could have done so, but I wouldn't do that. Right. Um, I just want to advocate. You help everyone else. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We have too many, um, you know, nonprofit organizations that they've done an incredible job past mm -hmm. years. So, you know, no, and I'm, I'm clear handed. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Linda, I want to thank you so much again thank for you, being Ron on Mio. my show. Thank Honestly, you. I really appreciate you making the time and it means a lot. Thank you, Aziza. Yeah. Best of luck to you. And I'm really proud of um, young men such as yourself to be involved, uh, an educated person such as yourself. Thank you. Um, to be involved, you know, and doing some, something so great for the Assyrians. God bless you. Absolutely. God bless your heart. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.